Hey everyone, welcome to Spitting Venom Presents Carnage Week. And this is the first episode we're going to do every day this week. I'm going to upload an episode, maybe two on a couple days, because I decided to change the format a little bit. Um, instead of doing what I do on the Venom vlog, and where I take like a whole graphic novel and just talk about the whole thing, we're going to break these down. Uh, so some of these, you know, we may not cover every story in the graphic novel that I talk about. So what I will do is I'll just encourage you to go pick these up. Uh, the, what we're going to talk about in the first two episodes here is from the graphic novel called Carnage Classic. Uh, this is, I'm mentioning this graphic novel because this is the only one that's in print right now that you can get these stories in. But there have been other versions of like, there's been like a mini series for the, like I had it when I was a kid. It's like a three issue mini series. It was called like Spider Man Presents Carnage or something. It had like a white cover with Carnage on it by Mark Bagley. It looked awesome. Uh, and it had issues uh, 361, 362, and 363 of uh, Amazing Spider Man in it and a couple of like uh, panels from previous issues that set up Cletus Cassidy, the character, uh, but it also had this little foreword in it by uh, David Michelini. So uh, actually it was called Spider-Man Carnage, colon Carnage. Uh, it came out in 1993, the trade paperback. So um, this, you can find this and the foreword and everything in the Carnage classic graphic novel. And again, there's so much stuff in this graphic novel. I can't cover it all, but I'm going to at least make two videos based on things that happen in that graphic novel. And then uh, you guys can go pick it up and read the rest because there's really great stuff. There's like Carnage takes over Silver Surfer. There's Cletus Cassidy like losing the Carnage suit and uh, be it being eaten by Venom. There's a lot of crazy stuff uh, in this book. But we're going to start with the origin of Cletus Cassidy. And before we get into the actual issues, I wanted to read this foreword, or at least some of it from David Michelini. Actually, I'll probably just read the whole thing. I'll try to read it as fast as I can. Um, he said... Uh, the, the title is Call Him Chaos, Call Him Ravage, Call Him Carnage. I wanted to kill the guy. No, not my editor. He signs the checks. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to kill Venom. And I would have too, if not for... Ah, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. In the beginning, there was an alien, a symbiote that Spider-Man had brought back from a distant planet. Emulating a sentient black and white costume, the creature eventually tried to bond permanently with Peter Parker, everybody's favorite web-slinging wonder. But Spidey fought back, and in the course of the battle it wound up sacrificing itself at the last moment to save Spider-Man. Then, a year later, when I began writing Amazing Spider-Man, a new villain was called for, and I re resurrected an idea I had begun developing in another book. As a result, I brought back the alien, joined it with a demented man named Eddie Brock, whose sole focus was his hatred of Spider-Man, and, along with superior artist Todd McFarlane, we introduced Venom to the world. Things went pretty well. Writing the character was a lot of fun, but since I'm planned uh, to stay on Amazing Spider-Man for at least 20 to 30 years, uh, I started thinking about the future, and I got a dangerous idea. Since Venom had his first story in Amazing Spider-Man 300, why not make his last story Amazing Spider-Man 400? Yep, that's right. I could kill Eddie Brock off and then have the costume wander around the Marvel Universe for a year or two, joining with various other characters before, setting, um, before settling on another host, uh, and making them the new Venom. Imagine the nifty stories if the symbiote joined with Dr. Octopus, which it had, not the Carnage one, but the Venom one, uh, uh, the Lizard, or Shudder, even J. Jonah Jameson. It sounded like a great idea, but then something unexpected happened. Readers absolutely loved Venom. As popularity and sales rose, it became increasingly obvious that Marvel would never let me actually uh, waste Comicton's favorite slavering symbiote. Uh, oh, what to do. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just end there and I'll tell you the rest. He basically says uh, they were trying to come up with a name for him. They were like, oh, you know, he's an alien from another planet. He probably reproduces asexually. Uh, so we'll use that for the backstory. We'll create a seed that comes out of him that goes inside somebody's bloodstreams and turns them into like a red creature. And, uh, and he actually said, and this is why I love being an editor too, you get an, a writer like this, like David Michelini, who comes up with these great concepts, and one of the editors, the assistant editor, actually says, well, why don't we call him Carnage? Because they were trying to come up with names for him. The first name, Chaos, was being used by a different company. Ravage was about to get used for a Marvel book uh, that was going to be called Ravage 2099, so they couldn't use that. And, uh, and Eric Fien, who was the, uh, the assistant editor at the time, Eric said, well, what about Carnage? And just casually mentioned it. And lo and behold, Carnage was born. So that little foreword is at the beginning of this book, and uh, and that kind of sets up the backstory of the character uh, and tells you a little bit about you know what their plans were, what they wanted to do, and what happened is after Venom became such a popular character, 
they were just like, all right, well, last time we left Venom, he was on an island and he thinks he killed Spider-Man. So he's kind of at peace. He's still kind of Venom, but he's just soaking up the sun. He's like, he has no idea Spider-Man's still out in the world. He's on an isolated island. Nobody else is with him. And he's just hanging out there. And he just, he's like, all right, I'm stuck here. And I'm just going to enjoy this because Spider-Man's dead. And I, I accomplished my mission. So now me and the symbiote are going to kind of be together. And I've always actually wanted to write a story about his time on that island and what was going through his mind and what he was doing day to day to keep himself busy. Um, but maybe, maybe one day someone will. Uh, so then it, if you flash forward from that issue to uh, just like maybe a few issues later, 10 issues later or so, to Amazing Spider-Man 344, there were these little backup stories that were happening at the end of the issues of Spider-Man that were introducing characters, uh, like new characters. And basically one of them was a story of Eddie Brock in prison. Uh, so now he had been, uh, this was before Spider-Man had stranded him on the island. So this is like a flashback story. And, uh, and it shows Eddie Brock, um, you know, working out in his cell. And his cellmate is this redheaded guy, um, skinny, like creepy looking dude uh, named Cletus Cassidy. And Cletus Cassidy is a serial killer, and he was put in a cell with a serial killer. Eddie Brock was put in a cell with a serial killer. Uh, so over the course of like 344, 345, these little backup two-page stories would show up uh, that showed uh, the, the symbiote returning and breaking Eddie out of jail. And then Eddie gets away. So in issue 359, and by the way, all this stuff is collected in the classic, uh, the, the Carnage classic trade paperback right at the beginning. They put all these little two-page stories in there. Uh, uh, Venom breaks out of prison and a piece of his symbiote gets uh, left behind. It's the seed of uh, rep reproduction. And he reproduces, leaves a cell, you know, a seed in there and it drops. And as the damage is there, Cletus Cassidy has like got a cut on his hand and he's leaning over near uh, the hole that was now created in his cell and the suit drips into his bloodstream. And it takes, I think, like a couple days or so to fully like un like wind through and it basically adapts to his bloodstream, which is why it's red, um, because the seed that dropped was black. And it goes into his bloodstream and it uh, it forms inside of him. And so when Cletus Cassidy, you know how Venom says, we are Venom? Cletus Cassidy says, I am Carnage. Uh, he and the suit are one and the same. Uh, plus the suit is has been reproduced and born on Earth in a different atmosphere. So it has slightly different powers too. So there's like a little bit of science that they throw in there. Comic book science, of course, but they threw it in there. And the first storyline is called Savage Genesis. And it takes place over three issues, Spider-Man 361, 362, and 363, which is known as Carnage Part 1, 2, and 3. And uh, Mark Bailey does the art. David Michelini, of course, writes the story. And we get basically st uh, a, a, a serial killer on the loose with Venom powers. Uh, and he goes and kills this guy named Chip right away. Just ices him right at the beginning of the story. And this was like an informant, someone Peter knew, um, uh, someone who had connections to Peter's real life and Spider-Man. And, uh, and he's killed. And Peter starts to feel responsible for it, and he hears evidence that, that there's some evidence behind that suggests it may be a symbiote. So, of course, he thinks it's Venom, and he thinks Venom is back. So he's going around trying to um, figure out who's behind this new killing, and if it's Venom, he's got to stop him. But when he shows up, he sees little, you know, creepy Cletus Cassidy sitting naked in an abandoned building holding a teddy bear. And uh, Spider-Man creeps up on him and Carnage's like, what's that teddy bear? Mr. Binky, we have a company. And he turns around and he sees Spider-Man and they just start going at it. And Spider-Man is terrified to see that it's a new symbiote and it's on an actual serial killer. Eddie Brock was always hard to deal with. And he's, you know, he's always like had like that weird sense of morality where he'll kill people if it if they got in his way to killing Spider-Man. But otherwise he tried to protect innocence and he had a real unbalanced look at things. Carnage is different. Car There's no reasoning with Carnage or Cletus Cassidy. Uh, he was a full-on psychopath. And uh, and so him and, and Spider-Man get into it, and Spider-Man sees that he has new powers. He can make an axe out of his uh, symbiote, and it actually will cut through you. Uh, it became a solid object. You know, Venom is like a liquidy form, but Carnage solidified. Uh, he had a lot of different powers like that. Uh, Venom could like, uh, ho you know, like bend light in a way and kind of like holograph you know like not holographically but he could like blend in like the predator uh, and he would like move through things and he could you know uh, cloak himself uh, but carnage I, I don't think he ever did that but after carnage and him fought as uh, spider-man fought him uh, carnage gets away and he writes carnage rules on on the wall and he and they also carnage can shoot like little projectiles and they stick into people like bullets they're like little blades uh so like little tiny knives and they go in and he like hits a cop spider-man goes to save the cop and carnage gets away but then carnage before he leaves writes in his own blood carnage rules so spider-man as he says i'm dealing with one sick puppy so what he has to do in the story is he has to go to the island show venom that he's still alive and then get venom to work with him 
to fight Carnage. And it is a really action-packed storyline from here on out. From issue two and three, the ball just rolls. And it has basically uh, Spider-Man uh, going to the Fantastic Four and Human Torch in particular. And he's like, you have flame powers. That can help me keep Venom in line. Take me to the island with some of this gear from Mr. Fantastic that, you know, a sonic gun and all these things that we could use in case Venom doesn't, you know, come quietly which of course he doesn't, uh, but they're able to weaken him and then they tell him, look, you gave birth to another symbiote and it attached to your old cellmate and he's killing innocent people. So Venom's like, all right, I'm listening. Like begrudgingly, I'll team up with you. They team up, they fight Carnage. They go, every, like Carnage goes and kidnaps J. Jonah Jameson. Then now Eddie Brock and uh, Peter have to go save, uh, you know, J. Jonah Jameson, which neither of them really want to do. They do it anyway. They save him. And they fight Carnage in front of a, a, a full concert of people. And they try to use the Sonics to, like, uh, you know, deafen Carnage. He gets away. They fight him in the sewer. Then they come back up to the, uh, the you know, the scene of, like, the, the concert and everything. Everyone's gone at this point except Jane Jones Jameson. He's trying to get the story and, and see what's going on. Spider-Man and Venom team up. They beat Carnage. Finally beat him. Uh, they turn on the sound. They are able to weaken Carnage. But then Spider-Man says, I'm sorry, Eddie. And Eddie's like, please, Spider-Man, like, stop. Carnage is out. He's unconscious. We can capture him, but I, I'm gonna die. Like, please, please stop the sounds. You know, it's it's hurting me. And Spider-Man says, "I'm I'm sorry, Eddie. Like, I really want to, but I can't do it. You're too dangerous." And you see, Spider-Man actually betrays. He doesn't keep his word, and he betrays Venom, uh, just adding more to Venom's hatred towards him. And Venom, you know, gets knocked down and unconscious. And then the Fantastic Four show up and shoot him one last time with a, a ray gun. You know, and then they capture him and Carnage and send them off. And uh, J. John Jameson at the end, as they're like picking up the pieces, says to Spider-Man, you know, Captain America would have kept his word. And Spider-Man turns around and like grabs J. John Jameson. He's like, look, Captain America's a legend. He's a good guy. I'm just a man and I make mistakes. And he goes, and I have to live with those mistakes. And he goes, so yeah, that's that's my burden you know, to, to bear. That's my cross to bear. Uh, but I'm not Captain America, dude. Like I'm just a dude. I'm a guy from Queens, you know, and he like walks off and just like, you know, it ends on a very somber note because yeah, Peter did feel bad about betraying Eddie. He actually thought he was bringing out the good person that was in Eddie. And then right at as that moment, he saw the good person. He couldn't trust himself to not um, betray him. He was like, I have to do, I have to do what I think will be right for innocent people. And this is the guy who terrorized me and my family. I'm just doing what I think is right. I believe in second chances, but I don't know if I can do it in this instance. And it was a really great moment. I think David Michelini wrote the crap out of this story. It was freaking phenomenal. And Mark Bagley's artwork was awesome. So uh, if you're out there and you've never checked out Carnage, the origin story, please do. I think you can pick up the single issues for pretty cheap. I think they're still like, well, I don't know. if When they announce him in the movie, if he is in the movie, when they make that official, if he is, uh, that'll probably up the price of the comic. So I'd say buy him now. I saw some for like 15 bucks, 20 bucks for, for each issue. And that was a good good price for those. So uh, if you're out there and you're collecting, pick them up. But if you just want to read the story on Comixology or in print, go support your local comic store if you're going to buy it in print and pick up Carnage Classic. It's awesome. It's super cool. Um, and it's, it tells you not just this story, but many more. And in the next episode, we'll talk about uh, a couple of those other stories. Uh, in the next episode, we'll talk about his, uh, Carnage, his origin, like his childhood, his connection to his friend Billy. And we'll talk about Mind Bomb. Uh, and also It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, so from the Spider-Man annual to It's a Wonderful Life, we'll talk about those three books, and that'll be our wrap-up of Carnage Classic. And then after that, we'll get into Maximum Carnage. We'll get into the current Jerry Conway run of Carnage. We'll get into Minimum Carnage uh, in, like the, in that era of like Kevin Shinnick. Um, we'll talk about Carnage when he was a good guy during Axis. We're going to make a bunch of little videos for you guys, and I hope you enjoy them. So stay tuned for this channel. Subscribe if you're a Carnage fan, if you're a Venom fan. All week long, Carnage stuff just for you. Let me know what you think down in the comments. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the future. Peace.